Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane <laughs> next to it. He knows that this is, you know, an, an administration defined by ignorance of the world. And so that's partly him playing to their base and playing to their audience, uh, you know, the, the, the credulous boomer rube demo that backs Donald Trump um, that, that wants to think that, that, that Donald Trump's a smart one and they're, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all elitists are dumb. <laughs> you, you elitists with your geography and your maps and your spelling, even though my your math and your reading. That moment of CNN contributors and Don Lemon mocking uh, Trump supporters received widespread condemnation. It's actually been turned into a campaign ad by the RNC. Don Lemon has since apologized, saying that he was, quote, laughing at the joke and not at any group of people. Joining us with his analysis on the moment is Noah Weinrich. He's the press secretary for Heritage Action for America. Welcome. Right. Good to know as a friend of mine. No, it's great to see you. I wanted to talk with you about this kind of in the context of another clip I saw that was flagged to me by the Yang gang. And this was Dave Chappelle, who's endorsed Andrew Yang, talking in the context of Trump supporters. Let's take a listen to that clip, and then I'm going to get your reaction. This particular election cycle, and, and, and I also like the Andrew's pragmatism. You know, I don't look at, at Trump supporters as my enemy at all. I understand why people vote for Trump. I understand people are desperate. And I think that Andrew's right. You run against the reasons that Trump got elected. You know what I mean? I got friends on, on, on both sides of the political aisle. I got fans on both sides of the political aisle. Uh, a lot of people say professionally it's not wise to support any candidate. But this idea is so good that I think it should exist. And I think the fountainhead of many of the good ideas in, in, on the table this year are coming from a single source, Andrew Yang. And for some reason, no one's paying attention to him. This guy is the origin of a platform that really does address where I think the country needs to go. It's a good plan. So you what do you, I mean, just contrast that, Noah, where you see a, a guy like Andrew Yang has got some of the highest crossover support, highest net favorables in the country with Republicans, actually. Versus the way that Rick Wilson, who calls himself a Republican, or right. what he is right now, and Don Lemon kind of just, you know, laughing it up at the idea that people could vote for Trump. And I think, l l tie it to this, they think the same thing, it's not just Trump supporters, it's right. anybody who isn't of their elite cohort, and I think that's what that's is exactly really disgusting right. about it. Yeah, the CNN segment shows exactly what the elites of America think about the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. They think they're dumb, they think they're incapable of governing themselves, but it's rude, and it's offensive, and it's just wrong. Mm. Contrast that with somebody like Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Dave understands, well, I don't agree with him on policy, but he understands what the people of this country are feeling. Mm -hmm. He understands that there is anger at this elite who has told us for decades that they know what's right, and they're consistently wrong. People yeah. like Don Lemon and Rick Wilson have been consistently wrong, at least since 2016. Right. But now they're doubling down. They're mocking the people who <laughs> were right in 2016, yeah. and they're not understanding that things have changed. Yeah. I think that's right. What's embarrassing to me about that clip uh, on top mm -hmm. of everything else, the joke wasn't that good. No, it wasn't funny. Not a yeah. good joke. <laughs> Don Lemon funny. is like losing his mind, yeah. chuckling. He can't even like look at the camera. He thinks it's so funny. You're like, a you and a crane. Yeah. Like, that's not funny. It's not even funny. Like that's not like, like if, if you're going to call other people idiots, yeah. like then you have to be coming with some high level yeah. stuff. Laughing at a pretty, yeah. high, pretty funny joke, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It better be John Stewart level stuff. It's <laughs> you and a crane. Especially for a professional anchor to lose it on his network. But right. I mean, the, the other thing, Noah, I just wrote a story from David Drucker. He's talking, he's from Washington Examiner. He says, never Trump Republicans are freaking out because of the rise of Bernie, because they ultimately, they were like, they were very comfortable voting for somebody like Joe Biden. What do you, what do you make of this whole phenomenon? Because that is really what Rick Wilson is. I mean, I think, I, I, I think it's been very much to the detriment for Democrats who have been putting their arms around a guy like Rick Wilson uh, from this very ter same time. And I'm like, listen, guys, he's a snake who betrayed one people already, right. right? So there you go. What do you think of this? Yeah, I think Don Lemon and Rick Wilson are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a continuation of what you saw with Barack Obama mm -hmm. calling people in this country bitter clingers to their guns and Bible. It's Hillary Clinton calling half of Trump supporters deplorables. Mm. It's just from the left and some of the right, unfortunately. Yeah. It's this contempt and this smugness towards most of the country, the working families of this country, mm -hmm. those who may be less educated or who may work a real job where they don't get to go on CNN every day. Yeah. And I think it's disgusting. I think it's part of what lost them 2016. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think what people don't necessarily understand about neoconservatives is that they're not partisan. Like their history, <laughs> 
as yeah, part, there used to be as, Democrats right? in, in the United States. Like yeah. they started as uh, Democrats. Scoop Jackson was the, is their godfather, mm -hmm. a Democrat. Uh, who wanted to nationalize like major parts of industry, right. but what he really cared about was expressing American po power overseas, right. military adventures. So they moved into the Republican Party when it was convenient for them. Now that they're being thrown out of the Republican Party, they're desperately hoping that they can mm -hmm. carve out a place for themselves within the Democratic Party. They, they say, oh yeah, there's plenty of Democrats, they also like war. Look, yeah. Joe Biden, for instance, uh, but Bernie Sanders is complicating these plans. Yeah, and no, one thing you could go into is about whether the, like the home of the uh, anti-elite sentiment within the GOP. Because I, I want to be fair. Look, honestly, a lot of people in the GOP five years ago, they used to talk the exact same way, sure. right, about entitlements, about many of these other sure. things. How have you seen that kind of change within the Republican Party and make it so that a Rick Wilson is no longer welcome? Sure. Yeah. So the Tea Party, I think, yeah. is the root of a lot of this. Mm -hmm. um, some people confuse that with neoconservatism. They f confuse that with the establishment. But that really was a populist start. Right. I work at Heritage Action. That yeah. was a part of that. Mm -hmm. it's, it was a grassroots organization. Um, in contrast to the previous two decades of GOP establishment. Yeah. So that's really the root of a lot of it. Uh, and there were some establishment Republicans in 2016 who were never Trump, who thought they could never win. But many of those people, some of them have left the party, like Rick Wilson, but I think more of them have taken the lesson of 2016. They have realized we were wrong about this guy. Yeah. We were wrong about some of his policies. We were wrong to doubt him on immigration, for one thing. Mm -hmm. They thought that immigration was a political loser, but yep. that was a political winner. Well, so I think it, a lot of people have realized that lesson and they have taken that into account. You know what it is, Noah? It was a loser amongst their friends in Washington, exactly. but it happened to be a winner with the actual public. I, you know one thing is, we talk a lot about Bernie on this show. Right. So let's think about in this context, which is that you've seen the, you saw the Republican elite, and so did I, in 2016, completely they were like this to somebody like Trump. How do you think they are going to grapple with a, burn, a Democratic establishment, really analogous in the same way? Sure. There's a corporate Democrats, right? How are they going to handle Bernie? What do you think? I think they're going to handle Bernie poorly. Yeah. I don't think anyone should uh, expect anything better from them. I mean, they pushed Hillary Clinton in 2016, an right. unlikable, swampy candidate. They pushed her hard, and she lost. Yeah. And they haven't learned the lesson of 2016. They're pushing Joe Biden, mm. another unlikable among most people candidate. Right. He's also extremely swampy, as we saw from that Politico <laughs> report yesterday. Yes. But they are putting money, they are putting ads, they are putting personnel behind Joe Biden because they are scared of Bernie. Yeah. And now I yeah. oppose Bernie on a lot of policy issues. Sure, but so do I. I mean, I say it here all He has stuck to his guns on yeah. many issues. Yeah. Yeah. People and respect it, that. It's such a pivotal election because in, in 2010, you had a foreclosure crisis, you had 10% employment mingled with kind of racist skepticism about the first black president and like a rising nativism from the, the immigration uh, compromise collapsing just a few years earlier. And that kind of animosity has, exists all over the globe. And demagogues can take it one way, or kind of socialists can take it another way. And so I think this, this election will kind of answer that question. Which, which direction is this country going to take yeah. that anger? Well, I don't agree with all that framing. Sure, no, no, it doesn't matter. But thank you, Noah. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Of course. Next on Rising, is the two-party system destroying America? Author Lee Druckmann is going to explain next.